how a whore really survives. <laughs> In case you were wondering. I wait here for you for what seems like a thousand years. Lying here on this crushed green velvet couch, my breath already shallow, my pants already undone, two fingers circling a nipple, dipping a middle finger into the small salty ocean of myself, I stir as if casting a spell for the cock I love above all others to return home to his whore. Come to me. Walk through that door right now. Put your hand at the back of my neck. Grab the fistful of hair you've wanted all day. Press your mouth hard into mine. Wrap your arm around me. Press your palm into my back until I am pinned to you. Your hardness pushing into me. My soft, slick opening pushing itself inside out to reach you. There's no great beauty here. No ring, no honor, no promises, no good intentions between us. There is just this, the waiting, the impossible pressure of desire. The beating pussy, like the beating heart, yearns for a full life, yearns for the fullness of you. Your entry takes my breath away every time for countless times now. Uh. This isn't some porn-induced, love-starved, commitment-hungry manipulation that will end in another piece of jewelry. Not in a dance, a cake, a life, or even a night that stretches till morning. This is not worthy of dates and figs and henna encircled wrists and some Kama Sutra inspired all day gazing of the divine through the portal of my yoni impaled on your lingam. I am not that kind of whore. And this is not that kind of redemption. This is no more and no less than the meaning of our human with our animal, yours and mine. Not for the planet, not for the good of mankind, not for freedom, not for politics. Just one connection between two bodies without the need for a ceremony or a church or a chuppah or a broom. This is not a permission-based, negotiated, sanctified, revered, fortified, endowed union. This is hunger. Plain and simple. This is you pushing my nipples together and sucking on them for your very life. This is me riding you, clutching the sheets, the pillows, the wrought iron headboard as if the whole world were receding and holding on for my very life while you say, give it to me. While you beg me to soak you, while you are drowning in me even as I am drowning myself even as the world is washing away. And I am calling out to you from this polite shell for something wild, crashing onto you, you cracking beneath me, both of us hanging on, being swallowed by the earth itself. If there is a prayer in this, it is for release. It is for something more than a shared bed and a shared life and shared children and bills and late night television and a rotating dishwashing and laundry schedule. This is not fucking for pleasure or orgasm or 539 ways to blow his mind or how to get her off with one hand and hold a cold beer in the other. This is not fucking for keeps or for status or even for love or money. This is fucking for survival. Because the only way to make sense of a lifetime in this body is to crash it into you like a wrecking ball again and again and again. As many times as it takes 
to accept that the world is not pretty, that we are not shining, that we are the smallest creatures calling out from across the desert to each other at night. And when we do, we need an answer we can feel. 